All right, everybody, I am here with Jenna Moresi. And if you don't know who she is, Jenna Moresi is a self-made full-time author and YouTuber. She currently has two novels published, each the first in their respective series. Eve the Awakening is a new adult sci-fi novel and The Saver's Champion is an adult romantic fantasy adventure, both of which are available on Amazon and a number of other book retailers. Wherever you buy books, it's probably there. There is a list of actual places on Jenna's website as well. And when Jenna's not pumping out incredible books, she's over on YouTube giving out some of the best advice for writing and self-publishing out there. Her YouTube channel has amassed over 147,000 subscribers and it's climbing rapidly, which has granted her many different opportunities, two of which are extremely high quality marketing classes on Skillshare. One is all about building a platform and a fan base as a writer, and the other details the process of having a successful book launch, something she just did a few short months ago in April when she released her second novel, The Savior's Champion. Um, Jenna has been a personal inspiration to me in my writing journey and many others out there, and I'm very fortunate to also be able to call her a friend. So I'm excited for this interview. Are you ready? Me too. I'm very excited. Thank you so much. For no having problem. So firstly, I just want you to tell us a little bit about your journey as a writer. How did you go from a writer, being a writer as a kid, from what I understand, to where you are today? Well, I've, like you said, I've wanted to be a writer since I was a little kid. It, I basically decided when I was six years old that this is what I was going to be. And uh, I, I guess I was a very tenacious kid because I just stuck with it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, especially back in those days, back in the 90s, um, the, there, there's, a, you know, and, and still currently there's kind of a stigma around creatives and, you know, starving artists, things like that. So, uh, people weren't super supportive and they were like, don't, don't you want to be a doctor? Don't you want to be a CEO? Things like that. So eventually that kind of uh, talk sort of wore me down. And by the time I was in college, I sort of figured writing would just be something I did on the side, something I did for fun. And so I went to college for business instead. Um, and I entered the world of finance. Once I graduated, I got a full-time job as a stockbroker, and um, I figured that's what I was going to do with my life. I was going to work in finance, and writing would just be some fun thing that I did in my spare time, and as I started working in finance longer and longer, I sort of had this realization that like, wow, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And I hate it. Like I just could not stand <laughs> my job. Like I would get there and be counting the hours until I got off so I could do something I actually enjoyed. And I realized that, you know what? I don't think I can take this forever. And I've always been passionate about, uh, passionate about writing. So I might as well just give it a shot. If it doesn't work out, I can at least say I tried. You know, I can at least have that in the back of my mind, that closure that it's not for me. So I started working um, on my first novel, Eve the Awakening, um, and I would go to work and write when I come off of work at, and get home, I immediately started my book. And my thought was, I just want it to be like a lucrative part-time job, something that fulfills me, something I look forward to once I get off of work. Um, and that lasted for a few years. And toward the end of the process, uh, my then boyfriend, now fiance, he had a serious accident and he broke his spine. And I quit my job so that I could sign on to be his full-time caregiver. And at that point, sort of everything went on hold. It was all about Cliff and his health. But as he got better and as I was taking care of him, taking him to physical therapy, things like that, um, time started you know, showing up in my schedule. So I was like, okay, I can finish my book and I can, you know, market it. I can um, try, try to get it out there, try to develop an audience. And people had been nagging me to start a YouTube channel for a long time. So I thought, I'm stuck at home, you know, might as well give it a shot. I can say I tried. Um, I started the YouTube channel and at first it was very slow. And then I made a satirical video, The Nine Weird Habits of Writers. And <laughs> suddenly my channel just took off and it got all these subscribers. It was getting all these, this attention. And long story short, by the time I was able to release Eve the Awakening, what with the growth of my platform and the growth of my channel, I was able to, around that time, I was thinking about going back to work part-time um, because Cliff's 
uh, health had improved significantly, but due to the growth of my platform, I was able to make writing my job. And since then, uh, now Cliff is, uh, he's still in recovery, but he has improved significantly. He doesn't need me as his caregiver. And now I am a full-time author and I've got two books out and I've got a YouTube channel and it's crazy. I did not think that I would be here. Right. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Most of the time, the career you say that you want to have at six years old is not actually what ends up happening, but you did it. So that's, you know... <laughs> It's okay. crazy. I, I feel very fortunate um, because my my main goal originally was just to one day, not anytime soon, but one day be able to make a living off my writing. And I figured maybe that'll happen when I'm like 40, um, but I was able to do it at 28 and now I'm 31 and <laughs> this is my job. And I just, I feel so fortunate that I'm able to do what I love and make money off of it, especially after hearing for so many years that it's impossible but it's right. not <laughs> right yep um so basically you did you immediately decide that you wanted to self-publish or did you have to do some research like what made you decide to go the self-publishing route versus the traditional publishing route well originally i was going to go traditional for the same reasons that most people <laughs> initially decide traditional they're like that's the legitimate option you're a real writer if you go traditional and mm -hmm. self-publishing you know there's no success there there's you know it's it's vanity press that sort of thing the more I researched it, the more I realized how little I knew about the industry. Um, you know, there are a, a lot of people, uh, I, I basically spent years researching the different publishing options and I interviewed at least 20 different authors. I interviewed both self-published and traditional published um, authors. And a lot of people don't know, they, they see the New York Times bestsellers, the, you know, JK Rowling, uh, John Green, Stephen King, they see that and they think that's the reflection of traditional publishing. And it is a reflection of a small percentage of traditional publishing and traditionally published authors, but there are millions of authors out there who are traditionally published and they're just not getting that kind of exposure. And, and that's more the norm. That's the 99% the of traditionally published authors that, you know, you go into the process, you get maybe a $10,000 advance. Mm -hmm. And that's not really enough to live off of, you know, that's, that's just like a nice side gig. And this was something that I wanted to eventually make my, my full time job. So once I learned that, that, you know, I would probably only get a $10,000 advance that traditional publishers weren't going to market me the way I thought they were. I thought, okay, well, this changes things a little bit, but let me interview uh, the different authors. Let me talk to people and their experiences. And the one thing I found is that writers are jaded on both sides of the aisle. <laughs> um, most of the authors I spoke to who were self-published, they were like, oh, it's terrible, and no one buys my books, blah, blah, blah. Most authors that I talked to who were tr traditionally published were like, my publishers don't care about me, they don't market me, I barely got any shelf space, and everyone just had horror stories. But there was one self-published author and one traditionally published author who were very happy and it was talking to them that kind of opened my eyes to sort of the reality of the industry and the self-published author was very happy because he was getting sales and he was very proud of his work and he was he had one book out and he was on the path toward making this his full-time job and the traditionally published author i talked to had over 20 years of experience, something like 30, I think it was closer to 30 years of experience. She had a ton of books published and she was a full-time author. And she was telling me how, you know, if you work hard, if you keep, you know, vying for your publisher's attention, one day you'll be able to make this a full-time career. And I asked her how long it took her. And she said it took her 20 years to, it took her 20 years and like 15 books before she was able to make it a full-time job. And that for me was really eye-opening because I had a self-published author who had sold one book and he was on his way to being a full-time author and a traditionally published author who spent 20 years trying to get her publisher to pay attention to her. Right. And after that, doing more research, um, it became clear that the business control more than anything was the reason that self-publishing seemed like the best fit for me. Um, no one was going to care more about the success of my novel and the success of my platform than I was. And 
I figured I might as well just bet on myself because it looked like publishers were probably not going to give me the kind of attention that I would need in order to make this a career, which is what I wanted to do. Exactly. Uh, good, good bet on your part, I'd say. <laughs> Thank you. It worked out. Um, well, so I'm yeah, happy. exactly. So speaking of the business part, do you think that having that background in business and finance has helped you as a self-published author? Oh, definitely. It's funny because I went into the um, degree very jaded because it's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be a thespian and all that. Um, and uh, I went into it like, oh, this is not what I want, but you know, it's what my family expects of me. And now if I were to go back, I wouldn't change a thing because I think it was my knowledge of business, my background in business, my background working in finance and things like that, that gave me the tools I needed in order to sort of take the place of a publisher. Because a lot of writers choose traditional publishing because they don't understand business. And they're like, I need someone to hold my hand and get me through all the parts of the process that I don't understand. But I understood those parts. And when I saw the sort of things that publishers do for writers, a lot of it, I was like, well, I can do that. I know how to do that. I learned that in business school, or I did that as a stockbroker. And the things that I didn't know how to do were things that were easy to learn, like from my perspective, because I had learned similar things. So I'm like, okay, this is sort of like XYZ in business. You just translate it into the writing world. And so I'm really grateful for my business background because it filled in the blanks of being a writer. And I basically was able to very easily translate that into acting as my own publishing house, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. And what I like most about your YouTube channel and the advice you give is that you're not quiet about the fact that being an author is being a business and you give a lot of uh, marketing advice and just business advice in general. And I think one of the big misconceptions when it comes to the self-publishing world is that you are only a writer um, and that you don't have to do much of that, the other stuff yourself. So what do you think are some other big misconceptions when it comes to the self-publishing world um, right now? Well, I think one of the misconceptions, you, you're totally right. Like a lot of people will just think I'm going to throw my book online and that's it. That's, that's not it. There are millions of books online and what are the odds that someone's randomly going to see yours and just decide, I've never heard of this, but I'm going to buy it. Like you have to market it. You have to treat it as a business. You have to understand that your book is your art. Yes, you are an artist, but it is also a product that you are selling to people. People have to buy the art. So you got to be aware of how you package that product. That means it needs to be edited. You have to hire an editor. And a lot of people will be like, do you always have to hire an editor? Are there, are there situations like they, they try to find the wiggle room? No, there is no wiggle room. <laughs> just hire an editor, just, just do it. It's expensive, I know, but it, your book is not going to perform well without it. And mm -hmm. the same goes for formatting. It needs to be professionally formatted. It needs to have a professional cover. This is the packaging of your product. And you could write the most amazing novel. It could be, you know, the next great American novel and no one will buy it if the cover looks like crap. It's just mm -hmm. not going to happen. Because and, we do judge books by covers, unfortunately. Yeah, we do. 100%. And I'll see people, you know, design their own cover and they'll be like, it looks, you know, I think it looks pretty good. And it's like, it looks like you designed it yourself. And, you know, <laughs> that's not a compliment. Like, I know you're trying to save money, but this is not the place to do it. You know, mm -hmm. you can save money in marketing. You can save money in your author platform itself, but the packaging of the product is that's the place where you're going to want to actually invest some time and cash and make it look nice. And I think another misconception, especially recently, I know for a long time, there's been a misconception that you can't do well in self-publishing, that it's not legitimate. That seems to be going away over time. I would say, I mean, I, I'm a self-published author and I've only had maybe two people say anything to me about, you know, oh, it's not legitimate. Um, so I think that misconception 
isn't as big nowadays, especially with so many, you know, New York Times bestselling authors who are self-published, uh, you know, authors getting movie deals and things like that. Um, but one thing, especially recently, that's become popular is pump and dumping, where um, an author or especially a self-published author will write, you know, as many books as they can in a year. You know, they'll write five books. They'll write like one book every two months or something or one book every six months and then just pump them out and pump them out. And that's become a mode for um, self-published authors making a lot of money and being successful. And it is, you know, it, there is some, I guess, weight to it. It is working for some people, but the point is, is that it significantly diminishes the quality of the book and mm -hmm. it's not um, viable for a long lasting platform because people become loyal to authors because they trust in the quality of their work. So if you are constantly pumping out books of very low quality, no one's really going to become loyal to you. No one's going to become a loyal fan. Um, you are just going to constantly have to pump and dump and pump and dump for the rest of your life in order to maintain an income because you're not really going to develop a, a fan base or a, or a legitimate aud audience. And I think a lot of people think that's the only way to make money in self-publishing nowadays. But I mean, I, I am living proof that you can take your time and spend a year or two on a book and you can still turn it into a full-time job if you in take the time and invest in the quality of it. So you do not have to write a million exactly. books a year to get it done. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and kind of going off that, that point, where do you see self-published authors making the biggest mistakes um, overall? We've talked, touched on the cover and the quality and whatnot. Is there anything else that you see self-published authors doing that are adding to the stigma? The, for, honestly, the number one thing is the edit. You know, self-published authors not getting their book edited. Like the cover is something that you can maybe overlook, but the edit, you guys just edit the fucking book. Like, just, <laughs> Please do it. Oh my gosh. And that's, that's the thing is anytime I see someone who is kind of apprehensive about self-published books, that is always what they mention is that the books are not edited. They're like, there are so many mistakes. So just, just edit it guys. Like that will end the stigma entirely is if you just be realistic about the fact that you got to get the book edited. You are not, you are not enough. You need mm -hmm. someone on your team to fix it because you are not enough to make it perfect. Just trust yep. me. I promise. Right. I mean, if you can miss a couple typos in an email, can you imagine a whole book that you've looked over multiple times and you still miss stuff because, you know, your eyes aren't looking at it in that way either. Even traditionally published books. I have not <laughs> read a traditionally published book without a typo in the last four years. The last one I read had two typos and, and they have an in-house editor. So even if you get an editor, there might still be a couple of typos. That's inevitable. It's human nature. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have an editor, it's going to be more than a couple of typos. It's going to be a yes. mess. Just hire someone. I beg yeah. um, <laughs> So moving on a little bit, we were discussing how self-publishing has changed a lot in recent years. People, it's now a viable option. Was that the case back when you published Eve? That was in 2015, right? I think so. so. Has it changed even in the last few years that you've been doing this? Um, I mean, back then, like I said, I, I wasn't receiving any flack or anything like that for self-publishing. Like I said, I mean, in my whole career, I've only had two people say something snotty to me. Um, so I think it was viable then, but it's way more viable now. There are way more options. Like when I published Eve, there was pretty much the option to have your book in ebook and paperback. And that, I mean, that was, that was pretty much it, you know, now you can do audiobooks, you can do hardback. Um, additionally, there's much more expanded distribution. Uh, for example, the Savior's Champion, I released it in April. It's in, it's on Barnes and Noble's shelves, you know, it's in bookstores across the country. Um, whereas with Eve, that wasn't even something on my radar. I wasn't even thinking about that because you never heard about self-published books being in physical bookstores. It was just kind of like, get it on Amazon, you're good to go. Um, so it's definitely changed. I mean, I've got the audiobook for The Savior's Champion is in, you know, 
the publication process right now. Um, we have the hardback available. We've got it in bookstores. It's just it, pretty much the options for self-published writers are at this point very similar to where they are for traditionally published writers. There's there really aren't that many limitations, except um, self-published writers typically have to price their books maybe, they don't, they don't get as many pricing discount opportunities that traditionally published authors do. So I would say the biggest limitation is you know pricing. But other than that, I mean, we have the same access to distribution channels that they do. And so it's, it's crazy. I mean, the, the options are limitless. <laughs> basically right. that's so excited I'm also really excited for the audiobook of the Savior's Champion I can't wait for that Me too. Um, <laughs> so you know a lot about the whole self-publishing you know world and the writing world I mean pretty much your entire tumblr blog is people asking you questions about the writing and publishing process right. so what kind of advice do you have for people who decided to go with self-publishing versus traditional publishing um, my first piece of advice is to research the industry as much as possible. Um, my second piece of advice is a lot of people see self-publishing and think that means um, find like a self-publishing group and publish directly through them where you pay them an upfront fee and then you, you know, you're paying them to publish the book for you. That's not necessarily what self-publishing is. You can self-publish through, well, not create space anymore. They're combining with Amazon. You can self-publish through Amazon. You can self-publish through Ingram Spark. There is lots of different opportunities available to you. And if you don't do the appropriate research, you may end up getting scammed. You may end up getting suckered, you know? So be sure to research the environment, research all the platforms, make the decision that works best for you. Additionally, start saving your money because the biggest downfall by far for self-publishing is that it's, it's expensive. Traditional publishing, it's not free to do. You know, you, some people do invest in an editor. Most traditionally published authors do all of their marketing, so or at least 90% of it. So they're going to have to invest in marketing. Self-publishing, you're paying for everything. You are paying for the editor. You are paying for the cover. You're paying for the format, all of that. You're paying for, you know, proof copies. So start saving your money, create a budget so that when the time comes for you to hire an editor, you're not sitting there going, oh, I can't afford it. I'm just going to publish it as is. And that's the thing that I hear the most is people saying, well, I can't afford an editor. And I'm like, well, why didn't you think about that? <laughs> like you, you've been writing this book for two years. That's two years that you could have been penny pinching. Two years you could have not been going to Starbucks and instead been saving money for the editor. So just know that it's going to be hella expensive and save your money ahead of time. <laughs> that's so true. I actually have a jar that's my editing fund that I, we put change in like spare dollars in just so that I <laughs> have something there right. um, for when it comes time to edit my book. But um, I think one of my last questions I have for you is what would you say is your favorite part of being a self-published author? Um, hmm. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking, I mean, I, I think it's just like the power and freedom. I'm a bit of a power junkie. And it's <laughs> nice that I don't have anyone giving me deadlines. I give myself deadlines. I don't have anyone telling me how I need to write my story for it to be marketable. I get to decide how I write my story. No one gets to have creative control over me. That's not to say that if my beta readers or editors give suggestions, I'm going to ignore them, but I don't have a business person telling me, no, you can't write about that because that's not marketable. People aren't going to buy it. I get to decide what I want to write and everything is under my control. I get, I get to do whatever I want. You know, I have um, a lot of, I know a lot of traditionally published authors who, you know, they have to get everything approved by someone. And it makes sense because, you know, this, this company is Hey, you put your book out and it makes total sense that they have to get it approved but it's nice that I don't have to I get to do whatever the hell I want whenever the hell I want to do it and <laughs> it's awesome it's awesome being my own boss pretty much I like it, it does. does sound awesome <laughs> um let's see oh 
actually, I have one more question, but just because I want to hear you talk about it, what are you currently working on? What is your work in progress right now? I am working on the companion novel to The Savior's Champion, which is The Savior's Sister. I'm so excited. Um, so The Savior's Champion, um, it takes place in sort of a Grecian Roman world called Thessin. It follows uh, Tobias, who's one of 20 men competing in what is known as the Sovereign's Tournament, which is a month-long gladiatorial event where 20 men compete in violent challenges to win the hand of their magical holy queen, the savior. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I have it. Yeah, so that story follows Tobias. Um, things get a little tricky when he falls in love with the wrong woman. He falls in love with Layla. So mm -hmm. the savior's champion follows Tobias's story during the tournament. And throughout it, you realize that Layla has got her own story going on. She's got something going on behind the scenes of the tournament. and their stories become intertwined. So at the end of The Savior's Champion, there's a lot of questions about what's going on with Layla. And the book I'm working on right now answers all of those questions. It's Layla's story during the tournament, her whole battle that she's dealing with within the Palace of Thessin, all the craziness. Oh my gosh, it's been so fun to write. I cannot wait to release it. It's gonna be awesome. I can't wait either because The Savior's Champion was so incredible. It's, it's my favorite book, so I'm really, really excited for the second one. Um, yeah, so I don't think I have any other questions. Thank you so much for taking the time and allowing me to interview you and ask questions just about the self-publishing world. And if any of you want to support Jenna, buy her books. They're very, very good. You know, one of my favorite things about you and the advice you give is that you practice what you preach and what you preach is very, very high quality marketing, self-publishing and writing advice. And your books just genuinely show that and show your hard work and all that you have put into them. And they're just absolutely amazing. And I love them. Thank you. And I really, really appreciate it. It means a lot, especially coming from an equally talented author. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, you can also take her classes on Skillshare and give her a follow on social media, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, YouTube, obviously, and even Pinterest. Um, anything else for everybody? No, I think that's it. Thank you so much for having me. I yeah. love this. This is awesome. Yeah, it was so fun. Okay. Awesome. Thank you.